We've got yet another Freedom Friday Q&A. Today we are answering a question from a comment on YouTube that is really super important. Um, it's time to get real serious. Here we go. My And welcome to Freedom Friday, where you learn how to free yourself and live your dreams. I'm Darian from DariaWakened.com. And today I got, actually not today, a few weeks ago, I got a question on one of my videos that I think I was intending on shooting a video for. I didn't even answer the question because it was such... Um, well, one, it was a really loaded question, and it was going to take a lot more focus and I believe compassion to answer um, because it was really it was a really serious life question. And um, this was in response to one of my videos actually while I was in Kelowna, British Columbia, um, a few, I guess it's about a month and a half ago. Um, I gave a tip on how I healed my depression naturally. And one of the biggest things that I do when I am in a really distraught, stressful, depressed, or whatever, when I'm in that state of like, you know, your mind has sort of, the fear has taken over. When I am in that, I try to remind myself of a scripture from A Course in Miracles. How else can you find joy in a joyless place other than to realize that you are not there? And it's been one of the, one of the greatest um, little scriptures that I've been able to use to just kind of snap me out of it and, and see the bigger picture. And it really has helped me. It still helps me to this day. I still use it. Um, you know, now I just kind of say, this is not real. <laughs> it's all in my head. But <clears throat> one of the questions that I got was from um, the person's screen name was Black Swan. So I don't know the person's name or anything like that. But um, I definitely want to answer your question um, in this video. And the question was... Well, it was more the comment in question. They were they were really finding it hard to believe that their perception was creating, you know, all of the harshness and the terrible things that can happen in the world, like death, poverty, illness. Um, and they were finding it hard to believe that that they could ever possibly have or be without suffering, that that, that was inevitable. Um, and of course I'm paraphrasing and, and they were, um, <clears throat> I know that they're Italian because they said that their, um, their English wasn't so wonderful, but I did get the gist and I understand that um, this is a question that a lot of us have. And I, I want to first point out the fact that it's wonderful that you are being inquisitive, that you are kind of challenging this concept that, that we create our reality and that, that we can avoid suffering even in the most traumatic experiences. I think it's wonderful that you're questioning this because what that means to me is that you're really searching for relief. And I want you to continue to do that. That's a really beautiful thing. And it's just part of the stages of healing, you know, and, and becoming awakened and taking back the power that, that a lot of us have and don't, all of us have, a lot of us don't realize that we have. So I really just wanted to take the opportunity to um, just take this question really, really seriously. And I want to start first by letting not only you who may not know me so well as some of some of my um, followers that have been with me for even a few years now 
and, and know my story a little bit better. Um, I, I cannot stress to you enough that even though I am very peppy and I'm lively and I can have a lot of energy and I can seem, I've even had people um, ask me and just assume that I'm naturally a happy person, that I live this great life. Um, it could seem like that, but the truth is that I, I have been acquainted with suffering, very well acquainted with suffering. I know suffering. I know depression. I have not lived an easy life. And it's not natural for me. I believe that all of us, it's natural to be blissful. But I have practiced depression and misery for so, so, so many years that it still is an instinct. It's still an instinct for me to go into a deep depression. Um, it's not you know, it's still something that I have to practice being happy. I have to get myself into a happy state. I have to start my day um, doing meditations and do. I'm still doing action things and it gets easier and easier as time goes by and it becomes more and more manageable and over the years it has become more and more manageable. And, and I do believe that, you know, there are times where gratitude comes very naturally to me, but it's still a shocking feeling, you know? And I, I just, I want everybody to know this, that I'm not just talking out of my ass, that I've really, I have experienced death myself. I have experienced great loss. I have experienced addiction and, and sexual traumas. I've, I have had to sit back and watch family members deteriorate um, into their own addictions and, and downward spirals and um, I've been in situations where I was in very abusive toxic relationships um, you know I've I've grew up in absolute poverty absolute poverty um, a very low income neighborhood um, so I know the effects of illness and death uh, suicide. I was highly suicidal. I was a cutter um, as a teenager and even into my early adult life. I was still cutting myself and self-harming and self-sabotaging. And so, you know, I didn't, I didn't grow up privileged. I didn't, um, I didn't have an easy life. And I want to stress that to you because I have been able to, you know, one of my greatest desires in life, the very thing that, that wakes me up in the morning, is being able to be the type of inspiration to others where, where people see themselves in me, where they look at me and they say, if she can do it, if she can go through all of that and come out, this wonderful and, and this joyful and have this great life, um, <clears throat> then I can do it too. I want you to know that I've been in the trenches with you. And, and that's just the first thing I want to say because I don't, I just don't want you guys thinking that I'm talking out of my ass because there are a lot of people that very well could <laughs> just be talking out of their ass. And there's, you know, I believe that there are people put on this planet to help other certain people and I believe that I'm put on this planet to help the people that have been suffering just as I've suffered so I feel your pain I understand you and I'm gonna go into your question now we cannot control the death of others no you're absolutely right I could not control the fact that my daughter's father committed suicide we can influence one another, but we can't control something as, as matter of fact as that. We cannot control the destiny of others. Um, so you're absolutely right. But what we can control is our suffering. So when my daughter's father committed suicide, 
for instance. And that's just probably, that's one of the more um, prominent tragedies that have occurred in my life. And you mentioned death, so I'm going to talk about that. Um, I cried. You can cry about someone's death, but you don't have to suffer. You know, I really gave myself the space. I allowed myself to go through the emotions, but suffering really comes from resistance. And so I didn't resist the process of emotions that I allowed myself to go to go through. And so I was able to, on some really strange level, I don't know if enjoy the process of grieving is, is really the right term, but it was a very beautiful experience. It really was. And this is why I teach um, survivors and, and I talk a lot to survivors about grieving gracefully. And I've done, you know, interviews about grieving gracefully because it is, it is possible to grieve gracefully. And I think that we have this, we've grown up with this black and white perception that crying is bad and that that equals suffering and that smiling and being happy is good and that's what we want to be all the time but that's not really what it means to be a human um we go like this we are always dancing through life we have and and i'm not going to call them ups and downs we have ebbs and flows um they're only downs if you call them downs you know so you can relieve yourself of suffering when someone passes. Now, my perception, as you said, you find it hard to believe that your perception can create um, the world or the things that happen in the world. My perception is about death much different than it used to be. I don't actually believe in death. I believe that what we consider to be death is merely a transition from, you know, our physical body wholly into the non-physical. And that's really is. And, and I, you know, I think that science proves that energy never dies. It only changes form. I know that. We know that. Science proves that. And through my own experience, knowing that from my daughter's father's death, that I can conjure his energy back up at any time. When I think about him right now, I feel him here right now. It's just saying hello to me. And I feel the same feelings that I would feel if he were here physically. Um, the same emotional sensations I feel. And so I know that he's not dead. I mean, how could he be dead when I can still feel him? And that's, that's my perception. And that has changed over the years. You know, it's been, it's been almost six years that he's passed now. And that's really given me a lot of time to, to be convinced of the fact that death isn't real. Um, so the fact that death exists in this physical plane, people will, will move out of their bodies. Yes, we can't control that. That's always going to happen. But you can change your perception about death. And through changing your perception and your thoughts about death, you can relieve your own suffering. So it is possible. And, and, I, and I, you are getting this from someone who has firsthand experienced a very tragic death, not just, it wasn't a natural death, it wasn't even a, a cancer um, where, you know, I feel like cancer in a lot of ways can be a little bit more accepted. A lot of times there's time to prepare for the death. And, and I'm not comparing deaths in any way, which way, shape, or form, but a lot of times we do compare deaths. And suicide, it's, you know, any uh, suicide is very... Um, there's a lot of emotions that come with a suicide and it's, it's very shocking. It comes as a shock. 
It also, there's a lot of anger that comes with it. There's a lot of non-traditional emotions that can come with uh, a suicide death rather than a more natural death or an illness or an accident of some kind. Um, you know, there's a lot more forgiveness in that. Um, so, and, and I'm only saying that, again, that's all perception, and I understand that. I'm just recognizing the mass perception, that's all. Um, but, you know, I'm only saying that because I want you to understand that this is coming from someone who firsthand has experienced um, a great deal of loss. And, and that's only one death that I'm, I'm mentioning that was the most prominent one in my life that affected me, of course, my, my daughter and our lives. Um, and I really grieved through that. And I still grieve. I believe that we grieve throughout our, our whole lives. Um, it was a really beautiful grieving process for me. And there was a lot of allowing. And it really is. I think the key to that is the resistance. Resistance is really what causes suffering. So when you decide, when you perceive that something is bad or wrong, um, <clears throat> you know, there's a lot going on in the world. There's a lot of things that we could label as really terrible that is going on in the world. I do not deny that. And I'm not sitting up here on my happy cloud going, everything's all hunky-dory, it's wonderful. But I really, truly, I would be lying to you if I sat here and told you that I don't really, truly, absolutely believe that all of those terrible negative things that we perceive in the world that are going on, they're actually really beautiful and they're necessary and it's a part of life. And the reason I say that is not because that I think that, you know, children should be abused or, or you know, mass death and murder should happen. I know that that sounds terrible and I'm not saying that that, that, that should happen. But what I'm saying is that I know that firsthand that through the tragedy that I've been through, if I hadn't gone through that tragedy, one, I wouldn't know the great love that I know. I wouldn't appreciate my life. I would not have had the motivation to become what I have become. Life would be sort of bland if I hadn't gone through those experiences. And I, and I, in one of my last videos, I talked about, actually the last video of healing my own depression, I talked about how I, was, I have been able to find beauty in the darkness. That there's this sort of depth and richness in experiencing those dark feelings and the darkness. And I believe in love. I believe that love is all there is. I truly, genuinely, wholeheartedly with everything in me believe that we all come from love and that that is all there is at the core of all of us. I truly, genuinely believe that. And because I truly, genuinely believe that, when something terrible happens, I see it as love. I see the love within it. I see what a beautiful opportunity this is for a lot of people to connect with themselves spiritually. Sometimes we need, sometimes the ego needs a wake up call. And when terrible, terrible things happen, it really is our spirit going, wake the hell up. And it forces us into waking up and connecting with the truth of who we are. That is my own belief. And that is how I have been able to relieve myself of suffering. When the world is saying, oh, there's so many terrible things happening. Now, I also want to point out that there are a lot of wonderful, beautiful things happening. That if you are suffering and if you are choosing only to believe in the darkness of the world, yeah, you're going to suffer and you're going to live a pretty miserable life but you're gonna have a desire to live a better life.
you're going to have more desire. You're going to crave it more. The, the worse it gets, the more you focus on the negativity, the more you will get so fed up and angry with it and maybe depressed that eventually it will kind of catapult you back on track towards perceiving love and the love that's in the world. We live in a physical realm of duality. That means that for every negative, terrible thing that you perceive in the world, there is an equal positive. The power that you have is to focus more on the positive rather than the negative. Actually, you have a choice to focus on either one. And the more that you focus through the law of attraction, the more you will bring forth to you. So if you choose to focus on those terrible things, you will only bring forth more of those terrible things into your own experience. You'll only attract, you'll happen to see all those negative things that are going on. You'll see more of the negative things that are going on than the positive. <clears throat> Same goes for focusing on the positive. If you choose to focus on the positive through the law of attraction, it will just bring more of the positive things that are going on in the planet and are all around the world and in the ethers, right? It will bring more of that into your own experience. We are all having our own experience on this planet. And yes, there are what we could perceive as negative things and there are what we could perceive as positive things. But for me, it feels a lot better to focus on the love. And so I choose to do so. And that is where your power lies. Okay? We can't control what goes on in other people's experiences. We can't control what other people do. We can influence people. We certainly can. And people can influence us. But it is your choice on, on what you choose to focus on. And that is how, through the law of attraction, we just start to attract more of it. All right, so I hope that that helped you. I really feel you. I feel you and, and anyone else that, that is going through this right now, this sort of um, time of questioning. I think it's a beautiful thing to be in a time of questioning when the world you start looking at is like, you start thinking, it can't be this fucking bad. It can't be this, this can't be real. And you, and then somebody tells you, but life is beautiful and it's wonderful. And you go, no, but this shit hurts, you know? And you start to question it and you're like, but wait a minute, how, how does it feel so good to you? How is that possible? And we just start to get really inquisitive and start to question life and, and challenge these concepts. I think it's a beautiful thing. I think you are absolutely on the right track. If you have any other questions, if anybody that has been watching this, I hope that you've benefited from um, Black Swan's question. Um, you know, and I, and I just want you guys to know that I'm here for you, that I'm always bubbly and I'm always doing, I'm not always bubbly, but on Freedom Friday I am. <laughs> and you know, but I still want you to know that, that I take, I take, I take being happy very seriously. And I take you being happy very seriously. And I want nothing more than to teach you what I've been able to find in my own life about being happy. And so the only thing that I hope that your suffering does for you is come to a place where you take being happy just as seriously. And, and you do everything in your power to search for joy. I love you all so much. Of course, keep your questions coming. Um, be sure to follow me and find me all throughout social media. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, you know, at Darian Empire. Um, I am going to be the, the movement, Mission Love Movement, that I um, started back in February and I've had to stop due to my pregnancy. Um, I am into my third trimester now. Um, but I will be actually publicly releasing those on YouTube. I have interviews that I've done with 52 
of actually half of 52. So I guess it's about 20. I think I did about 26 weeks or so um, of the world's up and coming spiritual thought leaders. So you will get so much. They're about an hour long each. Every Tuesday, I will be releasing them publicly on my YouTube channel so you can subscribe to YouTube. If you want to know more about the mission, you can go to missionlovemovement.com and do that. And other than that, I think that's it. I love you guys so much. I am always here to answer your questions and I'll see you next week. Mwah.